Hey, this is Joey Henderson with iConnect Training, and I want to do a little quick video on showing you how to set up your new wireless interface kit where you can cast all your devices that you're going to hook up to your training unit wirelessly to this TV or to any TV actually that you have. Here's the box you're going to get. In the box, you're going to have a tablet. You're going to have an AnyCast device, which comes in this box right here, and it's going to come with some cables to power it up. So here's the AnyCast right here. You want to be sure that you plug the cable in the back of it. This is going to go into any HDMI input except the one that says ARC. Stay out of that one. I got mine at number three. And then you're going to have a USB cable right here. That's going to plug in into the USB port in the back of the TV right near your HDMI input. And this is the receiver which is going to hang down at the bottom. And here's mine hanging down right now. Now we've given you a quick start guide which walks this through you step by step. So first of all, when you get your system, be sure that it's plugged into the 230 volt outlet because that's going to power up the 110 uh, for our TV. Secondly, don't forget, you've got an easy trap that comes with this unit and you want to be sure that that's hooked up and it's plugged in because if not, it'll be off on a safety. So make sure the easy trap is hooked up and the safety is plugged into it and make sure that your 230 volt is also plugged into the equipment so that we can have our TV turned on. Okay, I'm gonna plug in the TV. Now when you get a TV, typically you're gonna have to set it up right off, the, right off the bat, which I've already done this one. But when it says, do you wanna hook up to wireless or wired, say do it later. And then it says, do you wanna hook up other devices like Xbox, PlayStation, all that, do it later. So just skip through all that till you get to the home screen. I've already done that, so here's my home screen and I'm gonna choose HDMI number three, which is where I have my AnyCast. Okay, now it's looking to connect to the tablet. When you power up your tablet for the first time, it's gonna take you to our iConnect screen here, and I'm gonna to go to settings. I'm gonna go settings on the tablet. You wanna make sure that your Wi-Fi is turned off Okay, so connections, Wi-Fi is off. Then you're gonna go to connected devices. You're gonna make sure your smart view is on. And then it's gonna look for the AnyCast device. You're gonna choose it, and then it's gonna say start now. You click start now. It may connect to it right away. In this case, it did. Sometimes, however, it may take two or three tries, depending on the structure of the building uh, that you're in and other Wi-Fi signals that are going on that will interrupt sometimes this connection. But don't worry, just keep trying two, three, four times at the most usually and you're in. And sometimes the more you do it, the quicker they'll pair up. The second thing I want to tell you about on the TV settings is that when these come out of the box, your picture size is usually set to auto. And it's, as you can see, not taking up all the TV. I like to bring it out a little bit bigger. So go to picture settings, go to picture size and choose stretch, not zoom. Zoom will cut off things, but go to stretch. And then now you've got the majority of the TV uh, to use and for viewing. Now, as you can see, we are mirroring our tablet to our TV through the AnyCast. No cords at all and no internet needed as well. So after that, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna click my Little three bars there. And I'm gonna go back to scan probes or my iConnect um, app. And now we are ready to start up our wireless uh, devices and begin to throw them up here on the screen. And that'll be next. Okay, great. Here we are now. We're ready to hook up our probes to the tablet and show them up on the screen. Your quick start guide walks you through this as well. Let's get your kit out, and in the kit, you're gonna have all of your devices. Now you have uh, your air probes, you got your pressure probes, and you got your two uh, line temp probes, and then you've got over here, same thing, you got your pressure and your temperature. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna turn them all on. So I just keep them in the bag here, turn them on till they start flashing orange.
Okay. And then I'll do these as well. They start flashing orange. Okay. Now notice too that they all got a number, like this is SP670. Now, another thing too is if you screw in your pressure probe and it doesn't read pressure, sometimes you can take uh, the screwdriver here we've given you with the little straighter valve uh, removal tool there and just take it and back it out just about a quarter turn so that it's sticking out a little bit. Sometimes they come in and uh, they're all the way down level and they will not uh, pressure in the straighter valve. So you just take it here, back it out, just barely a half or maybe a full turn. Your song's sticking out and then you'll be fine, okay? Okay, now they are ready to be scanned. So we're gonna get our tablet here and we're gonna scan probes. And now you'll come to this menu right here. You gotta make sure that all of your devices are turned on. So when you first turn them on, they're all gonna blink orange. When you hit scan probes, then it's gonna find them all. And as you can see, when I hit scan probes, it found all the probes. And I've got six probes turned on and it shows six probes. Now, I'm gonna connect them all now that they've been found. And you can see here, it's starting to connect to all of them successfully. Now, once it finds all of them, and if it stays in this little circle here, and you notice that it's no more adding any more probes, just tap your screen of your tablet and look, and it did not find probe number one. That's no problem. I'll just come over here and I'm gonna hit connect. And it's gonna look for that one by itself and it found it. So now all six probes are connected. The next thing we wanna do is we want to map them to tell it which thing they are, high pressure, low pressure, supply air, return air, and so forth. Now when we do that, I want you to pay attention to something. You have duplicate probes here. So both of these are SP670 pressure probes, okay? But on the back, they have different serial numbers, a 381 and a 383. So we're gonna tell the tablet which of these is high pressure and which of these is low pressure based off of that number. So let's go with the SP670 381. So happens to be the first one. Look at there, probe one, SP670-381. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna press these three little buttons here and I can choose whether it's gonna be high pressure or low pressure. I haven't hooked it up yet. I'm just gonna tell it it's low pressure. So my 381 is my low pressure probe. Then I look for this one. This is my SP670 and this is my 383. So look down here, here's SP670, 383. So I'm gonna go tap these three little dots there on the right, and I'm gonna choose high pressure. So now I got my low pressure mapped and I got my high pressure mapped. And I'm gonna keep doing that here. So this is SP597. It's called a thermo hygrometer. That is just a real fancy word for a temperature sensor that reads wet bulb, dry bulb, and displays relative humidity. On the back side, it's a number 321. So here it is, SP596, 321. I'm gonna hit those three little dots. Then I'm just gonna call it supply air. And that's gonna go right up here, reading my supply air coming out of my equipment. I'm gonna get the other one, SP597, and it is 330. And of course, it's this one right here that's not been connected yet or mapped out yet. I've already got one labeled as supply air, so now I'll label this one, the 330 as return air, okay? And the last two is our pipe clamps here for pipe temperature. So this one is a 674, so there it is, SP323, 674. I'll go up here, I'll call that the suction line, and then 
I'll go to the next one and I will call that the liquid line. And there you go. So now all of my probes have been identified of what they do, what line they go on, what temperatures they measure. Now, the last thing you wanna do is hit next. Okay. And we wanna choose what training unit we're on. This is the 206C. So I'm gonna go change trainer, 206C. Now it's set up, it's got your profile of your equipment. The outdoor air temperature is the one you can change because we're in a lab and it depends on what temperature it is in the lab. This lab's pretty darn hot today. Uh, so I'm gonna change mine here. It is 88 degrees in this lab. Let's see here. There we go. It is 88 degrees. And so now this unit's gonna get a better idea of what parameters it should be working at at 88 degrees outdoor air temp. And then save it. And ta-da, there you go. So we've got our refrigerant pressure screen here. It's gonna tell us our pressure, our saturation pressure based off our refrigerant. We've already chosen the refrigerant that's in the system for you. Um, we've got SLT, and if you're not sure what that is, or the student needs to learn it, we can hit a little graph right there. Little I button gives you the information that tells you the suction line temperature, and it also gives you a definition of the suction line temperature and what it's used for. So that's a good teaching point right there. And then that's true for all across here, superheat, outdoor air, liquid line temp, suction line temp. Every one of these has information about them that the student can, can check out or you can use it when you're showing it to them and explain what each one of those means. So this is the refrigerant side. Now, that's called gauges. Now you got one more side over here, the airflow. And this is now gonna give you supply air properties. So that's based off of the probe I stick up here, the one I labeled supply air. And it's gonna give you dry bulb, humidity, and wet bulb. Supply air and return air. It's also going to do the differential for you, dry bulb differential and wet bulb differential, which is really important to know the both of them. Uh, and then with that information, it can calculate the capacity of the unit uh, because it's going to go ahead and figure in 400 CFMs per ton. Now, as you add in the static pressure probes, which we come with, and you begin to take supply and return air static pressure, it'll start calculating actual airflow in the unit and it'll actually calculate true capacity based off of true airflow. So really, that's it. Once you've set up the probes and you've done your unit profile, you'll never have to go back to those again unless you disconnect or, or add more probes like that. And you got two screens. You got the air side of the screen and you got the refrigerant side. And with that, you can teach pretty much every single principle on the refrigerant and air that you want up here on the screen and have all the students gathered around. They can see it while they're having to crowd around a little gauge set or some little pro teachers. So, pretty neat.